this is a, a little thing about uh, coffee in Michigan. I lived in uh, Michigan for 16, or a little over 16 years with my husband and children. And um, this is a little, a little something from then. It's, called, it's from a section called Hill of Beans. In Michigan, I became a solitary drinker as Fred never touched coffee. My mother had given me a pot that was a smaller version of hers. How many times had I watched her scoop the grounds from the red 8 o'clock coffee tin into the metal basket of the percolator, waiting patiently by the stove as it brewed. My mother, sitting at the kitchen table, the steam rising from her cup, entwining with the smoke curling from her cigarette, resting on an invariably chipped ashtray. My mother, in her blue flowered house coat, no slippers on her long bare feet, identical to my own. I made my coffee in her pot, and I sat and wrote at a card table in the kitchen by the screen door. A photograph of Albert Camus hung next to the light switch. It was a classic shot of Camus in a heavy overcoat with a cigarette between his lips, like a young Bogart, in a clay frame made by my son Jackson. The frame had a green glaze and the inner edge had pointed teeth like the open mouth of an aggressive robot. Robot. In, in South Jersey, we say robot. But uh, I thought I'd better be bilingual here. There was no glass in the frame and the image discolored through the years. My son, seeing him every day, got the idea that Camus was an uncle who lived far away. <laughs> I would glance up at him from time to time as I was writing. I, write, I wrote about a traveler who didn't travel. I wrote about a girl on the lamb whose namesake was St. Lucy, symbolized by the image of two eyes upon a plate. Every time I fried two eggs sunny side up, I thought of her. <laughs> We lived in an old stone country house on a canal that emptied into Lake St. Clair. There were no cafes within walking distance. My one respite was the coffee machine at 7-Eleven. Do you have 7-Elevens here? Yeah. Well, you, you get the drift, right? <laughs> on Saturday morning, I would rise early and walk a quarter mile to 7-Eleven and get a large black coffee and a glazed donut. Then I would stop at the lot behind the fish and tackle store, a simple whitewashed cement and outpost. To me, it looked like Tangier, even though I had never been there. I sat on the ground in the corner, surrounded by low white walls, shelving real time, free to rove the smooth bridge connecting past and present. My Morocco. I followed whatever train I wanted. I wrote without writing of genies and hustlers and mythic travelers, my vagabondia. Then I would walk back home, happily satisfied, and resume my daily tasks. Even now, having at last been to Tangiers, my spot behind the bait store seems the true Morocco in my memory. No, no, no. I was just thinking about it. <laughs> Michigan. Sorry. Those were mystical times, an era of small pleasures, when a pear appeared on a branch of a tree and fell before my feet and sustained me. Now I have no trees. There is no crib nor clothesline. There are drafts of manuscripts spread over the floor where they slipped off the edge of the bed at night. There is the unfinished canvas tacked to the wall 
and the scent of eucalyptus failing to mask the sickening smell of used turpentine and linseed oil. There are telltale drips of cadmium red staining the, lin the bathroom sink along the edge of the baseboard or splotches on the wall where the brush got away. One step into a living space and one can sense the centrality of work and a life. Half empty paper coffee cups, half eaten deli sandwiches, an encrusted soup bowl. Here is joy and neglect, a little mezcal, a little jacking off, but mostly just work. This is how I live, I am thinking. <laughs>